All right, I want to welcome you guys all to this week's report. Um, today is Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to all of you watching this. Uh, we had really good fishing over the weekend, and we've got some great weather coming in this weekend's forecast, so i got a lot to go over. But uh, make sure and stay tuned to the end because I'm going to be sharing a new Calico Bass presentation I've been doing that's been working really good. It's a lot of fun to fish with. So without further ado, let's go to the map. The Santa Ana winds made for really good weather over the weekend, at least on Sunday, um, and boats fishing at Channel Islands definitely took advantage of it uh, and had great fishing. Um, sport boats up there are doing great on the uh, Lingcod and Reds. I know the Aloha Spirit this Monday had limits to get under Lingcod trip. Boats out of uh, Santa Barbara Landing Coral Sea, uh, been going out to Santa Rosa as well and loading up. Really good fishing up there. My friends Gary Reyes, Jay Jones, and Mike Stembridge went up there on Sunday on the Jay's boat, or I think it was Jay's boat, and uh, they ended up fishing uh, San Miguel and had uh, limits to reds and lings, general limits to rock cod, a really nice yellow eye at the end of the releasing because you can't keep them in uh, Southern California waters. But definitely a fun fish to catch on an artificial lure and a real trophy. Uh, the weather up there looks great again Friday and about through the whole weekend, basically, Friday through Sunday. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a weather system come down Monday. It's going to affect all of Southern California, but it looks like a one-day event, and we're going to be back to nice offshore conditions. Um, best weather day looks like uh, Friday, day after Thanksgiving. I'm going to be heading up there myself, probably. Got a trailer up to uh, Santa Barbara Landing and either go to Rosa or Miguel, depending on sea conditions and weather. Um, I'd like to go up there and do some more really shallow water rock fishing. A lot of stuff up there you can fish in 20 or 30 feet of water and get a chance at uh, catching, you know, even a link caught up there. I've caught them at Rhodes Reef where you fish a slug on the bottom and get bit. And the second you set the hook, you can really see the fish rolling around on the bottom. It's shallow enough, you know, clear water, 30 feet of water, stuff like that. So I'm going to try and load up on some reds, deeper water and lings, and then uh, head inside and fish artificial lures. See if we catch some on a crankbait or a spinnerbait, stuff like that. As far as rockfish go, just go up there and have a fun time. Um, if you're looking to head up that way, you know, any day this weekend looks good. I'd say Friday's probably your best shot weather-wise. And uh, I'd keep an eye out if you're going up there for uh, west wind or northwest wind that blow around Conception at night, but stop in the morning. A lot of times it may look very calm in the morning, but as the wind blows at night up there, especially out of the northwest, it can be extremely rough on that crossing. So, you know, I normally look for a couple days of continuous no wind or Santa Ana's before I plan a trip up there. Um, anyway, so heading down the coast to uh, San Clemente Island. Again, not a lot of coverage this week, but there is good fishing in certain areas. Um, I fished here over the weekend on Sunday, had really good bass fishing and some bonita. Um, all of our bass came on this, uh, this new presentation that we've been uh, working on here that Corey taught us. So I'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, we fished the east end backside. Super clear water in some areas, you can see the bottom and you know, 30 feet of water, crystal clear. Nothing happening in those zones. We needed some off color water. The fish seemed to want the current going in towards the island. We had good uphill and downhill in different zones, didn't get bites, but we narrowed it down to a few spots that had off color water and current running in towards the beach and the kelp and did pretty good on the bass. And, uh, Later in the trip, we uh, had a bunch of bonita come up outside of the kelp, so we pulled up out there. They were boiling around, jumping and stuff, and had fun fishing on the DD100s and small little uh, chrome jigs on bass gear. Got fish maybe up to six or seven pounds. Most of them were, you know, two or three pounders. There's some yellowtail in that zone as well. I saw one of the San Diego boats uh, chasing sonar schools around there, right outside where we were fishing the kelp. I think they got one. I don't know how many they ended up getting. Um, there's also some fish on the front side. My friend Benny Florentino had a trip over there on Sunday as well, and he got a, his uh, client caught an icy all till on a surface iron um, on the west end front side. So a lot of fish in the island, uh, and the Santa Ana's make for, you know, great traveling weather out there. There's also good rock fishing for the boats fishing. I know the, saw quite a few private boaters out of Desperation Reef uh, looking for uh, fishing rock fish, and I'm sure they did pretty well. Uh, Right before the high tide, we decided to run offshore and look at that zone where the sport boats had done well at night, uh, previous couple days. And um, the area we're going to look at was about 10 to 12 miles off the island. But uh, once we got out to about 8 miles 
the water dropped from 63 to like 61 and a half on a pretty sharp edge. So we ran a little further to see if it would warm back up, it did not. So we went back to that edge and looked around and we saw two jumping bluefin. Uh, so there's a sign of fish out there, but there's just nothing you can cast the lure at. I mean, you see a couple jumpers in the distance, it doesn't really help you out a lot. Real lack of birds out there, real lack, you know, just it's very difficult private boat fishing out there because you need to sonar around, most of the bites are coming at night, these fish are deep, not much service signal at all. Um, of note, the water that we saw those fish in on the backside looks very similar on the front side of the island. And while we did not see any fish while we were coming home, I would not be at all surprised if some fish popped up in that zone as well. So if you're heading across either way, keep an eye out for birds, puddlers, breezers, shiners, anything like that that might indicate there's some, uh, some blooping around. Um, the bite was good over the weekend. It dried back up a little bit during the week, but the last few days those fish have been biting real well again. Boats loading up at night, some boats getting limits. You know, it's 60, 80 pound fish, a few hundred pound fish being caught. Mostly on knife jigs uh, or sinker rigs. And your best bet to catch those things is to fish at night. You know, it's, uh, I guess the daytime really slows down quite a bit. They had a couple good daytime bites late last week, but that was going into the, <coughs> sorry, that was going into the new moon, and I think that's kind of over. Um, if you want to get on that bluefin bite, I'm sure there's some boats leaving Thursday or Friday night out of San Diego, and I know the Thunderbird's running, I think, Friday night. Uh, going fishing for those bluefin on a day and a half. So I check it out. You know, I, I, with this little bit of weather we're having, I would not be at all surprised if uh, these fish don't get knocked out by I mean, it's one day of wind. It's not that windy. So we could very well be catching these fish into the next full moon in, you know, early mid December. So who knows? We'll have a bluefin for Christmas as well as uh, Thanksgiving. But uh, yeah, that's about it. You know, it's uh, rockfish along the coast, bass, and Yelltail at the islands, tuna offshore. Uh, should be decent fishing for this time of year, regardless of where you end up going. I know that uh, down south, San Diego, they're fishing rockfish, Coronado's getting Bonita, same stuff as they're getting the other islands. But uh, yeah, it's not nothing too exciting, but heck, it's the uh, end of November here, so we should be thankful to have anything happening at all. But uh, yeah, hey, stay tuned for a second. I'm going to show you how I uh, rig up this new bait. So as I mentioned a few weeks ago, we were having a pretty low percentage, uh, not percentage, we are getting a lot of bites on the, the 7 inch MC split tail slug fish on the uh, owner's sled head, but uh, the baits weren't lasting because that small string on, spring on the sled head tends to tear out. So you might only get one or two fish or even a couple bites on that rig before that bait tears off there. And I was thinking about modifying the spring on there and trying all kinds of different things. I talked to Corey Sand and he shared a, uh, a technique, a rigging technique that uh, he's been using, and uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's completely changed the way that I want to fish calico bass. And this is a interesting thing here. So what I have here is I have a 5.0 Gamagatsu weighted keel hook. I think it's 3 8 ounce, and they come with a spring on there. I swapped the spring out with the owner's spring because it's a little bit more durable than the Gamagatsu one. You can buy those in bulk. I just ordered them from Tackle Warehouse along with the Gamagatsu hooks. I think it's a large owner spring. And what's rigged on here is this is a six inch MC slug. You can fish the seven inch split tail slug, whatever. But this bait rigged on, um, on this hook here is completely weedless, cast like an absolute bullet and has an amazing darting action. I tried to get video of it in the water, but it didn't work out. Um, I'll fish this bait with a stop and go retrieve, a couple fast winds, pause, a couple fast winds. This bait zips around, and then the second you pause, it shoots off to the side, like almost like a, a glide bait type of thing. And uh, the bass love it. You, know, you cast it right over the stringers and just keep your rod, I keep my rod level. And if the bait wants to ride out of the water, I'll drop the rod tip towards the water. But, you know, to, let me back up the drag and I can show you the, uh, the, the speed of my retrieve here. I'm not going particularly fast. I'm doing about like this. And I'm watching the bait to make sure it's swimming well. I'll keep the rod tip down. It pops out of the water, but not always. So you want it to pop now and then. It looks like a bait fish is just skittering along the surface fleeing from the bass. And every bite on this bait is visual. I mean, when I say visual, these fish are jumping out of the water on it, turning cartwheels. I mean, it's fighting for it on the surface. You'll have a big blow up behind it, and you pause it, and it slides to the side, and another bass will come out of nowhere and eat it. I mean, it's a really exciting bait to fish. 
and uh, this thing's pretty torn up here. The uh, the nice thing about it is you get a lot of use, a lot of life out of your bait. I probably caught 15 fish on this bait on Sunday. It's still in one piece. The only time you'll have to replace it if they bite off the back of it, which they'll do sometimes if they're aggressive. But uh, if you've been looking for a different presentation that's fun, that's service related, this is it. I mean, this is, you know, I would be in Jimmy and his son were out there, Clemente, uh, catching bass and giggling like a bunch of schoolgirls. And we don't get very excited about fishing uh, normally. So that's really something cool. So, to so fish this bait properly, you need the right tackle. I tried a lot of some different stuff and it didn't fish as well. So, 200 size reel. This is a Abu Rebo Inshore. I use a Pen 200. Shimano, Daiwa, whatever you got, Okuma. They all work. 200 size reel. 30 pound braid. I fish this with 20 pound braid and the bait sinks too much and I have your leader. That, well, uh, let me get into this real quick. So, 30 pound braid to a 20 pound leader. So we had a rod rigged with 20 pound braid and a 40 pound fluorocarbon leader and that difference in line diameter and leader size sank the bait a little bit lower and did not have the same action. So if you get one and you rig it up and you start fishing with it, play around with leader and line configurations until you get one that keeps that bait within the top two or three inches of the water at all times. So that's where your bites are going to be. This is a seven foot uh, uh, medium heavy uh, rain shadow eternity rod. I also have a nine footer that I was fishing at, uh, at Clemente by having to break the tip off when I cast awkwardly and hit Jimmy's antenna, which luckily I can just cut one guide off and put a new tip on, but that's uh, one of the drawbacks. And talking about that, you know, we normally fish with two guys on the boat, and then when the third guy comes in, I'm suddenly the guy in the back trying to find an angle to cast, and now I'm casting directions I'm not normally doing it and that sometimes relates in the uh, rods being broken on other rods or antennas and things like that. So happens to anybody. If it's happened to you, don't feel bad. Anyway, this lighter action rod, it's a blast. I mean, these things load the rod up. Speaking of which, you're going to get bites. You're going to watch them bite it. If you set the hook or keep whining, you're going to lose that fish. So you're watching these things come up. They're going to take it. I stop whining with my tight line and I wait for them to pull the rod tip down. And I swing away from them. I don't swing up. The rod tip goes this way, I swing this way. Much better hookup ratio. And um, what was interesting, I've been fishing this bait for a few weeks, and Jimmy and Briggs have not. This was their first trip fishing it. And we all three had it tied on. We're all three getting the same amount of bites, but I probably put three or four fish on the boat before either of them got one because they hadn't figured out the way to set the hook on these things. So let them eat it, pull it tight, pull it away from them, or just tight speed up the wind once they pull it that way, and you're going to have a really good hookup ratio. But yeah, I'm hoping to have some more video of this thing uh, in action at some point. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put a picture up of this here, but uh, definitely check it out and give it a try. It's a really fun presentation, and a lot of times when the bass aren't biting a big weedless swim bait or a hard bait, they, oh, they will bite this. And even the PV, I was getting bites when they weren't biting anything else. So. Always cool to find something new, and I appreciate Corey Sandin uh, constantly innovating the tackle stuff for us and giving us new things to get excited about. But uh, that's about it. I hope you guys all have a happy Thanksgiving and uh, get out there and catch some fish this weekend.